All right, welcome. This video is a demonstration of using Minitab to conduct our nonlinear regression. So if you open up nonlinearregression.mtw, Minitab worksheet, um, you'll see that we have our sigma percent increase data and team size. And the first thing we want to do typically when you get a data set is do some kind of a graph to see are there any relationships, what does it really look like, and so the first thing we can do, we can go to graph and do a scatter plot. And let's just do a simple scatter plot, take a look at the data. And our output y variable is the sigma percent increase. And the x variable, the input variable, is the team size. So the hypothesis is does team size have an influence on the actual improvements that can be made within a process. So let's see if we can find something out about that. So let's just say OK and take a look at this. All right, so it doesn't really look like it's any kind of a linear relationship. It looks like there's some kind of a curve going on. Now, if we weren't convinced from this, we can go ahead and choose statistics, regression, and let's go ahead and use our fitted line plot and let's just be bullheaded and let's just say, well, this has got to be linear. All right, so the response Y is the sigma increase. The predictor is team size. All right, let's see. Let's get our graphs, which would be a standardized plots of residuals. We want the four and one because remember that we want to make sure that our residuals are normally distributed. That's important. All right, so we've got to have that for a regression. From an option standpoint, Let's have our confidence intervals and our prediction interval with a 95% confidence level. Let's say, okay, I'm not even going to put a title on this. All right, and we're, we're let's see, storage, residual, standard, no, we're not going to store any of that. Say, okay, and say, okay, sorry for the mumbling. And here we have, well, here's our residual plots. Well, it doesn't look very normally distributed. There's some kind of a pattern going on between the order and the fits. And it looks like there's a couple of different distributions here. This is bad, 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 bad. So this is like a terrible analysis. Just looking at this, you say, oh my god, that's horrible. So that's not working for us in our favor. Let's go up to the session window. All right. And let's scroll up and see what we got. Ooh, a whopping R square of 1.6 with a p-value of 0.21. So that tells us, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that this is not the analysis to do. Okay, and that's fine. So now let's, let's get smart. And we knew, based on the graph, that yes, it's probably some kind of a curvature to this data. So we're going to click on Edit the Last Dialog Box. And now we're going to say, okay, let's do a quadratic. So this is a non-linear regression now. Okay, so a quadratic. The graphs, we still want to have standardized graphs, 4 and 1. And yes, we want to see if our residuals are normally distributed. Okay, from an option standpoint, we want our confidence intervals. And this time, we're going to call this our on linear regression of sigma percent increase based on team size. All right. And let's see, from a storage standpoint, we can actually store the fits. And we're not going to, well, we're not going to do that. I got something else planned. I say, okay. All right, look at this. All of, we got Distribution looks normally distributed within 95%. We're hanging in on there. This looks good. This looks good. We're good. Everything looks good. We got normally distributed data. Woohoo! Yay! We like it. All right, so go up to our session window. And now we can take a look at that. And we can see now that we have an R squared value of 74.4%. We actually have an equation. We've got a p-value of 0.000, so it says, yes, there is a difference when you change from one team size to another team size, and it does influence 
um, the percent sigma increase that you would have. All right, so let's take a look at uh, go to our graphics window and okay, fitted line plot. All right, now this was the linear one, so you can see that that doesn't work at all. But here's our fitted line plot now for our quadratic or nonlinear regression. And you can see that depicts pretty well what's going on. Now, you could say, well, there's a lot of scatter in that. Could we improve our prediction? And one of the things that we could do is we could take a look at the average values that we have for each team size. So let's go back to our worksheet and let's see if we can get an average value for team size of one and two and three. And to do that, we'll go up here to um, stat basic statistics and we want to display some descriptive statistics and the variable that we have is the sigma increase. The, the optional bivariable is team size. The statistic that we want to have is the mean. We're going to say OK. Um, graphs. We're not going to have any graphs. And we're going to say OK. Alright, so here is our data size and mean. I hold down the Alt key. I can highlight all this stuff. There, I got it all highlighted. Now I held down the Alt key when I did that. I'm going to copy that, Control C. And I'm going to go back over to the worksheet and I'm going to start here and I'm going to say Control V. I'm going to paste all that. Use spaces as delimiters. Say OK. And now I have my size and I have the average value. And let's get rid of this lonesome data point there that really doesn't exist. We saw that star that was on there. Now I need to double check on that. Let's just click on the big blue eye. And we can see that size and mean, yep, there's 20 data points and there's none missing. And it's always a good double check on something like that whenever you copy and paste from a session window. Now we could have actually dumped this stuff in there by saying stat, basic stats, and we could have said store the descriptive statistics, and we would have said sigma increase is the variable and team size statistics. We want the mean, say OK and OK, and now it put it directly in. We can delete this column that we don't need. And now we also have the same information now, uh, it's, but we'd have to change the titles. So that's just another way that we could have done it. So again, let's see, Control X, Control V. All right, we'll get rid of these guys and delete. Okay, so now we have our size and our mean. So you saw there were two different ways. We could have displayed it. We could have stored it. Um, storing sticks it directly into the worksheet so you don't have to do any cutting and pasting. But I thought it was good to show you that you can cut and paste from the session window. And the trick is if you've got multiple columns is to hold down that Alt key when you highlight it. So that's a little trick that, um, once again, in Minitab is not intuitively obvious. All right, so let's use these now to calculate our regression. So stat, regression, and this is a fitted line plot. And we want to use the mean now as our, and our predictor is going to be size. And it's quadratic. We still want to have our standardized four and one. Our options, display, confidence intervals. Say OK and OK. All right, now these are even cleaner. All right, there's less data points, but it really is clean. If I go back to my session window, all right, we can see that, and this is kind of cool, linear. It says 0.551 p-value. No, it is not linear. Is it quadratic? Yes, it is. 
All right, and here's our regression analysis of variance. And up here now, our model is a 93.6, or 94% of the variation is explained when we change from one team size to another team size as far as the percent sigma increase is concerned. All right, and we proved it beyond a shadow of a doubt because we've got a p-value that's 000, which is much, 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 much smaller than 0 0.05, okay, which is what we want to see. Our residuals are normally distributed. That's a good thing. So we now have a model, all right, and the model only has a standard deviation of 4.6. The other model that we had had a standard deviation of 9.7. So we've reduced the standard deviation, the variability within the model, and which makes sense because we've increased our R squared from 74.4 up to 94% now. And let's take a look at the fitted line plot now by going over to the graph folder. And you can see this nonlinear regression now when we just did the averages. Um, this is a really good looking model now. So you can see by taking the averages, we did reduce some of the variability um, in the model by just using the average values when we created our regression. So that is how you would do the regression analysis for some nonlinear data with a nonlinear relationship. And it's telling us that uh, the team size of, of uh, full time and part time members should be around 10 or 11 if we want to have some optimal um, increase. You know, we got one flyer up here, but you know, somewhere in here, 10 or 11 folks is going to be kind of that team size of the full time and part time members that are going to give us the biggest bang for the buck. And uh, we've pretty much seen that in practice anyway. Usually, team size is a full time or four to five people. And then there's always going to be four to six more folks that are going to be part time. Uh, resources that you're going to draw upon as you're trying to make improvements in any business operation or on any product or service delivery. So that's the analysis. That's what we learned from it. And that's how to use Minitab to do a non-linear regression analysis.